Well, hello and welcome back to Conversations at the Soul Cafe. Great to see you again. Now, this is the second episode of our very first week of the podcast. And in this first week, we're having a conversation about the biblical concept of renewal, revival, awakening. Those terms are nuanced a little differently, but they each describe the experience of God bringing a refreshing to his people, either corporately or individually, by the outpouring of his Holy Spirit. Now, we began yesterday by looking in the 43rd chapter of Isaiah. We're going to go back there again and hear what the Lord says through the prophet 700 years before the birth of Jesus. He says this, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland or streams in the desert, perhaps is the more uh, popular or familiar rendering of that line. Now, God doesn't only do new things. I want to be very careful that we begin with that disclaimer right off the bat. We tend to like new things, don't we? We prefer new cars over old ones. We prefer new clothes over old ones. We prefer new houses over old ones. If they didn't cost so much, we, we would do nothing but new things. We like new ideas sometimes over old ones and can get caught sometimes even in the idolatry of the new. The old is not bad. In fact, in the book of Revelation, the very last book of the Bible, in chapter 21 and verse 5, the Lord says, Behold, I will make all things new. He doesn't say, I will make all new things. He says, I am in the process of making things new. So perhaps the new thing that God wants to do in your life is not a totally new thing at all. Perhaps God is remaking an old thing. Perhaps God is taking you back to an old place that the last time you were there when you left it was parched and dry, but perhaps God is bringing refreshment through his presence to that place in your life right now. But we have this promise that God wants to do new things in us. And in those times when God does a new thing, it's exciting. But remember, if we're going to live into the promise of God doing new things, we also have to live into the prerequisite of what God tells us to do. And if we're going to see the new and experience the new, sometimes we have to forget the old. And forgetting means oftentimes choosing to forget. Even if we can't erase something from our memory, we can choose to forget it in the sense that we allow God to lessen its impact upon our life. I remember someone saying uh, one time in a conversation, I distinctly remember forgetting that thing. And that's the discipline the Lord calls us to live by. If we want to walk in refreshing, we have to specifically remember to forget. Now, there is a, an, um, an interplay between the new and the old, between the forward and the backward, between the future and the past in our life that is necessary. Um, I drive a car, like many of you do, that has a big windshield and a very small rearview mirror. And they really are in proportion to the amount of time we ought to spend focusing if we're going to drive in a healthy and a safe way. Um, no one drives by looking through the rearview mirror. I mean, I, I doubt you get up in the morning and just decide for kicks to drive to work backwards through your rearview mirror. Nobody does that. And you certainly wouldn't arrive safely. We drive looking forward. We drive through the windshield or looking through the windshield um, and only glancing into the rearview mirror. In fact, the National Transportation Safety Board says we should spend about 17% of our time, between 17 to 25% of our time looking in the rearview mirror uh, and the bulk of our time looking forward if we want to drive safely. And there is much of that principle here embedded in Isaiah 43. If we're going to see the new thing and experience the new thing God wants to do in us, we have to choose at times not to focus on what's behind us. Uh, there is a passage in the book of Genesis about God's dealing with Abraham and Abraham's uh, nephew Lot and Lot's wife. And you remember when God delivered them from the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, he gave them instruction not to look behind them but to move only forward as they exited uh, that wicked place. And yet Lot's wife looked over her shoulder and the scripture says she was turned into a pillar of salt. Now, I heard about a little boy who'd been to Sunday school and uh, 
the Sunday school teacher was teaching on this story of, of Lot and his wife and said that when Lot's wife looked over her shoulder, she uh, turned into a pillar of salt. And the little boy said, well, that's nothing. The other day, my mother turned and looked over her shoulder and she turned into a telephone pole. Well, again, we have to, we have to drive and live moving forward. Oftentimes, we miss the new things God wants to do in our lives because we're too busy looking at the last things uh, that God did. We miss the new things because they don't look like the last thing God did. You know, the last thing God did was a new thing when he did it, but it may not be new today. And living in the refreshing work of the Spirit of God in our lives means that we are always living in to those new things that God does, which are informed by the last things, but oftentimes require that we relinquish the last things as an act of obedience in order to live into the next things. And so today as we pray, I want to ask you to do this. Think about the stirrings that are in your heart today about perhaps a new thing God wants to do. Maybe you're in a season of transition in your life. Maybe you've come out of, very, of a very painful, difficult experience. Maybe you've been living in one of those wastelands. And you're going to embrace today by faith the promise that God wants to do a new thing in you and for you. And he wants to refresh you with the presence of his Holy Spirit. But in order to do that, you'll have to think about those things behind you that you choose to forget or that you only glance at for a sense of perspective. What are those things? What is God calling you to sacrifice or surrender to him from the last things God did so that you can be fully available to him for the next thing? Let's pray together. Lord God, I thank you for our friends who are watching today. And I ask that as we, again, have read this 43rd chapter of Isaiah and as we have embraced your promise of doing new things in our lives, that, uh, Lord, we would be uh, willing to move into that place where you're leading us. And as a part of that, we would also be willing to um, either forget, choose to forget some things that are behind us. Perhaps we forget by forgiving uh, perhaps we simply glance at those things in order to gain a sense of perspective on where we're going. But Lord, we cannot live driving backwards. And so we pray that today you would deliver us from the preoccupation of that which is old and the preoccupation of that which is behind us so that we can live into the new thing you're making and the new thing you're doing in our lives. We thank you that you know where that is leading, even though we can't see uh, the roadmap or can't necessarily see a clear vision of where we're headed, but we do know that you are changing our course. And we choose to live into that by faith because we know that the refreshing work of your Holy Spirit is always a better place than those dry and parched uh, grounds where we sometimes tend to want to stay because they're familiar to us. And so God, we thank you today for your promise. We ask for you to give us the grace to live into our part of that promise in Jesus' name. Well, God bless you, and thank you for joining us today. We will see you next time on Conversations at the Soul Cafe.